For all its beauty and splendor, the wilderness can be a cruel teacher. Lightning is more than just a dazzling display of light and sound. It's a powerful manifestation of energy born from the charged chaos of thunderstorms. With temperatures hotter than the sun's surface, it defies our comprehension, offering a glimpse into the boundless power that our universe holds. Few earthly phenomena rival the sheer terror that engulfs one in the heart of a relentless lightning storm. Please click the subscribe and like buttons. This is Outdoor Disasters. Yosemite National Park, a sanctuary of unparalleled natural grandeur. This sacred realm of towering granite cliffs, cascading waterfalls, and ancient forests is a testament to the remarkable beauty and resilience of our planet. Yosemite's history from the visionary conservation efforts of John Muir to the establishment of the National Park Service reminds us of our ability to protect and preserve the places that touch our souls. Located in the Sierra Nevada mountains of California is one of the most iconic and breathtaking national parks in the world. The park is characterized by its remarkable geological formations such as El Capitan and Half Dome, which are beloved challenges for rock climbers. The park's signature granite cliffs and domes were shaped by glacial activity over millions of years. Yosemite offers various outdoor activities, including hiking, rock climbing, camping, bird watching, and stargazing. The park's extensive trail system accommodates hikers of all skill levels. Within the depths of this natural cathedral, we find solace and a resounding call to preserve our precious lands. When visiting Yosemite, you're reminded of the impeccable beauty of our planet and humbled by the power that created this sacred land. For one group of hikers, their half-dome hike would be horrendous. On September 21st, 2023, Jordan Dean, Josh Van Dyke, Jordan Swendener, a couple of other friends, set off for a typical hike on the trail to Summit Half Dome, one of the most popular hikes in America. The day started off clear. The group checked the weather before they set out for a hike, and Jordan Dean remembers seeing a low probability of rain Thursday morning as they set out to Summit Half Dome. By the time their group arrived at the Subdome, a destination before the final push to Half Dome, it was slightly foggy. At the base of the cables, there's an infamous warning sign to hikers, warning of lightning strikes. To reach the top of Half Dome, hikers must climb the side of Half Dome, about 400 feet or 120 meters, maintaining balance using metal cables. Nevertheless, they climbed, holding onto the cables. While it was sunny when they began the ascent, little did they know an incoming storm awaited them at the top and a terrifying ordeal was in their near future. The group had reached Half Dome Summit by approximately 12.30 p.m. As the summit became enveloped in fog and the weather took a turn, individuals, including two friends in the hiking party, began descending the cables. In a matter of 15 minutes, the once overcast sky transformed into a mix of rain and sleet. Using a two-way radio, the two friends who were descending relayed to Dean that the cables were congested due to the increasing number of people trying to escape the approaching storm, causing slow progress. Consequently, Dean, along with Jordan Swendener, Josh Van Dyke, and their companion Glenn, made the decision to remain at the summit and wait out the inclement weather. The two descending the cables suddenly heard a cry for help. A woman had fallen down the northern face of the mountain, but she was fortunate to strike a rock ledge, preventing a further descent down Half Dome. Emergency services were promptly contacted and a helicopter crew arrived to rescue her. Rain began to cascade down the mountainside as people continued their descent. Soon, hail joined the weather's fury. During this challenging descent, one of Dean's friends momentarily lost their footing but regained his grip by clutching one of the supporting poles along the cables. Both friends eventually made it safely to the base, although the one who had slipped suffered a severe knee injury. Amidst the descending rain, the atmosphere resonated with the ominous echoes of thunder, signaling the rapid approach of a lightning storm. With no refuge in sight, Dean and his companions, still stuck on the summit, sought shelter from the downpour within a rocky cave on top of Half Dome. A stranger, also looking to find shelter from the incoming storm, joined their group, bringing their number to five nestled in the cave. 
Unbeknownst to them, this seemingly safe decision would prove to be a grave mistake, for this cave held a dark and deadly history. It was the site of one of the most tragic disasters in Yosemite's history. In 1985, a party of determined hikers disregarded the storm advisories and embarked on their ascent of Half Dome. Placing their trust in the cave as a sanctuary, the group sought shelter when lightning suddenly struck. Tragically, the lightning left two hikers severely wounded and claimed the lives of two others. One hiker succumbed to a harrowing seizure, causing a perilous fall from the precipice of Half Dome, while another perished due to the overwhelming surge of electricity coursing through his body. The remaining two hikers, bearing the scars of their harrowing experience, continue to grapple with lasting injuries to this day. As one of the injured hikers put it, in reality, it was the least safe place we could have chosen to be at that moment, short of standing on top of that mountain with a big lightning rod in our hands, which is essentially what we were doing. The group, now sheltering in that very same cave, unaware that this spot was the worst place one could choose on Half Dome. The group assembled within the cave, initially experiencing a fleeting sense of security, believing they were shielded from the encroaching storm. However, this illusion of safety was abruptly shattered when a lightning bolt struck the summit of Half Dome, electrifying the cave where they had sought refuge. The lightning went from one of the rocks to Dean's knee. It felt like maybe a house voltage or like somebody punched me in the knee, Dean said. Glenn was also struck. The lightning went from one of the rocks to the back of his head. It was like thunder and lightning instantly splitting your ears, Dean said. In the process of regaining their composure, visibly rattled by the initial lightning strike, they were struck once more. After the first one, everyone is fine. We don't think another one is going to strike again. And just a few moments later, you see it just come straight through the rock. Jordan Swendener recalled. The sheer force of the second strike triggered a catastrophe within the cave as the electricity surged through the bodies of everyone inside. After the second strike, the stranger who was in the cave with them was lifeless, hunched over. Then his body went limp and he fell to the side. We were yelling for him to wake up and trying to shake him and then checked for a pulse. Glenn began to beat the chest of the unconscious man, trying to get his heart started. Luckily, the man was alive but was unconscious for a little while. Van Dyke was struck at the same time as the stranger and was left dazed. Swendener desperately tried to wake Josh from his daze by yelling his name. Are we in Denver? Is the first thing Josh said after regaining consciousness. We didn't remember where we were or how we got there, Van Dyke said of himself and the stranger. About 10 minutes passed before Van Dyke began regaining his memory. He was like a zombie. He was just a shell of a person, Dean said. Van Dyke's hair was scorched from where the lightning entered and he later discovered it burned a hole in his sock, leaving a mark on the bottom of his foot, presumably where the lightning exited. The man who lost consciousness regained his sense of what happened within about 20 minutes. It was scary not knowing if lightning was going to strike again or how bad. There was nowhere to go and nothing we could do about it. That was terrifying, Dean said. After spending approximately half an hour within the cave, the rain finally relented, prompting the group to emerge and unite with fellow hikers stranded atop the summit during the storm. Although a gentle drizzle persisted, and the rocks remained slick from the recent downpour, all of them began their descent down the slippery, smooth granite of Half Dome. While the group had felt assured during their ascent of Half Dome, they now understood the need for utmost caution with every step as they made their way down. It's shocking to me how different, how much grip I felt like I had going up versus when it was wet on the way down, Dean said. Van Dyke lost his footing a few times, but was able to catch his feet on the poles to avoid falling. The group came across a group of women who had stopped on the cables mid-descent during the storm. They were so scared and hadn't been moving, Dean said. The women encountered difficulties, particularly due to the lack of traction on their footwear. Dean advised them to remain there and a way to rescue. However, one of the young women expressed a belief that her shoes offered a better grip and she was going to make an attempt to descend. We were just slowly going down and we heard a scream and looked as she kind of lost her grip and hit this pole and bounced out to the side and slid, Josh said. The woman lost her footing and slid approximately 20 to 30 feet, descending down the southern side of the cables. 
panic engulfed those on the cables as they cried out in desperation while witnessing her fall until she struck a rock ledge, a stroke of luck that prevented her from plummeting further down Half Dome. She was sliding fast and she hit it really hard and her body didn't move for a minute, Dean said. A rescue worker who had been there to save the other woman who fell attended to the second woman. By the time the group reached the bottom of the cables, they could see the woman was sitting up with a brace. Seeing the second girl fall right in front of us, we all saw her slide down. It really goes to show how serious the situation was, how big and dangerous these mountains can be if you're not prepared, Dean said. Following the traumatic experience, Jordan Dean uploaded a TikTok video recounting the calamitous events of that fateful day. The video quickly gained widespread attention as it went viral. Dean and Swendon are granted an interview to NBC Bay Area, where they vividly recounted the events of that day. Their emotions clearly still deeply connected with the memories of that harrowing experience. When asked if they still see the ordeal replaying in their heads, Jordan Swendener stated, I still have nightmares every night about it. Every time I close my eyes, it's like you're back in that cave again or trying to get off those cables. The power of lightning is both captivating and humbling. Understanding the intricate dance of electrons that occurs within a lightning bolt allows us to glimpse the intricate beauty that underlies its explosive brilliance. In its electrifying dance across the heavens, it serves as a reminder of the extraordinary beauty and danger found within its embrace. Surviving a lightning storm demands not only awe, but utmost respect for nature's fury. It is a stark reminder that in the wilderness, you are a mere visitor, subject to the capricious whims of the elements. Lightning can strike anywhere and it does not discriminate. If you hear thunder or see lightning, seek shelter immediately. If you are caught outdoors and cannot reach shelter, try to find lower ground and avoid isolated trees, open fields, and bodies of water. Do not seek shelter under small open structures and do not stand near tall objects or metal fences. Once you are in a safe location, wait at least 30 minutes after the last sound of thunder before resuming outdoor activities. Lightning can strike miles away from a storm center. If you are in or near water, such as swimming or boating, get to land immediately. Water is an excellent conductor of electricity, and lightning can strike its surface. If you are caught in an open area without shelter and feel your hair standing on end or your skin tingling, assume the lightning position. Crouch low with your feet close together. Tuck your head and cover your ears. Avoid electrical equipment. Do not touch metal objects. In the midst of a lightning storm, there is no room for complacency. You must be vigilant, swift, and smart. Seek shelter, but remember, even shelter isn't a guarantee of safety. Crucial information so you can handle an outdoor disaster. Thank you for watching. One more outdoor disaster content? Check out these stories I believe you'll enjoy.